What is up, FIFA faithful? Bear Hamster here with the 16th episode of my Minnesota United career mode. And before we get into it, I'm going to go on a rant about this most recent game against San Jose Earthquakes. So yeah, this is going to be off the cuff, improvised. This is right after the game, and I am livid. Yes, I was right with the score. It's 1-1. They got the point, but they should have had more. I have never seen this team so terrible in the second half. This It's the worst half I have seen in years. It was awful. It looked like they've never seen a soccer ball in their life. Just the concept of kicking it and trying to find other players, they just couldn't do it at all. And then they brought on Agadello, who I don't even think he knows what a net is. Okay, let's just start from the beginning. They score it off of Debassi, who just... He was just deflecting every single ball off of him and almost going into the net. That first one almost made in. But then the one Espinosa hit goes off right off of his foot. Miller can't react to it. They're down by one. And then the red card happens, which was great. Because it's like, all right... You got some time. You got like 70 minutes to score not one but two goals to get this dubs away from home. Midweek. They get the goal straight away. And I'm excited. Like, all right, we got the goal straight away. Let's keep on let's keep putting this pressure on. But then no. They're just dead. Nothing from them for the rest of the game. Yeah, there were a couple chances here and there, but that second half was truly awful. Every single player, it, it seemed like they didn't know the concept of a ball, how to kick it, how to pass it, how to connect passes together. It looked like they were down to 10 men. It was piss poor. And you'd say, oh, they're down a man. To me, they were down two men, San Jose, because the ref was making every single call in the loon's favor. San Jose should have had a penalty kick. Cade Cowell makes a great run past Coleman. Taylor sticks his foot in there, trips Cowell, but no call. What? Like, I'm I'm on the side of San Jose fans. Like, what? That should have been a penalty. They should the loons should have lost this game. It was Oh my god. Like, usually I go for, you know, top three players of the game. We're going bottom three. Because the top player of this game was simply the ref. The guy with the great haircut, he was making all the right calls for the Loons and all the terrible calls for any casual fan. Like, Adrian Heath must have pictures of that ref or something. Like, I. All right, let's just get into bottom three. I would have to go to Bossy, uh, just getting that yellow to give him that chance for the free kick at the end, giving up the own goal, having two deflections off of him, not positioning his body right. I think the second one, I'd have to go with... Uh, I can't even... I want to say Will Trap. I know he scored, but for the rest of the game, all he was doing was just passing it back and forth. Like... Ah, he's just Garbo. Even Dotson was Garbo. Reynoso was extremely Garbo. Like, I... Th he was just on a completely different wavelength. I mean, it probably doesn't help that you had Agudelo for that second half. Oh, my God. So, I would... <laughs> I'd go to Bossy, Reynoso... I'm just trying to think of like just everyone was just so bad and I, you know what let's go Adrian Heath Adrian Heath was terrible like you have a game three days after your last one where everyone was working and they lost one nil and you barely changed the lineup and the only reason you changed the lineup DJ Taylor was because Gasper was out for reasons not known probably means he got COVID or something or tested positive 
So like, you should have changed something. And, oh my god. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep the oh my gods in this. What? I don't know. Like I could just keep <laughs> just keep stopping and starting, but this honestly. I, I, I'm going to the game on Saturday. I better not see any lick of this. Just this. It, it, the best way. They were in a fugue state. Just. They had no clue what was going on. Like. They were lucky the other team was down a man. It was bad. Like, real bad. I'm trying to come up with more examples, but it's just so much bad. It's so overwhelming. I can't really comprehend it at the moment. And I'm trying my best. Because I think, like, if I did this the day after, it would come out as, like, oh, you know, they were trying to go for this approach, but it didn't really work out. Oh, too bad. But, like, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Anyway, yay, I got it right. That's my second one in two weeks, three weeks. So good for me getting that right anyway yeah it was bad let's just get on with the episode due to my rant we're only going to do one game and it is going to be sporting kc since again they are going to be playing at sporting kc this weekend this is how i see the team lining up for the game against sporting kc i see it just about the same just three in the middle with dots and alonzo and trap but instead of gray goosh it is alonzo since I do believe Greg Goosh did take a serious injury in that game against San Jose. Taylor, once again, at the left back role, I don't think Gasper will be ready. Yeah, we'll see how we do against the best team in the West in real life. I like how with the default stadium, they picked one that looks just like TCF Bank. They haven't changed their idea of what Allianz looks like for the past couple of years. I do hope they get Allianz Field into FIFA at some point. I know it won't be in FIFA 22, but I do think that maybe in time, maybe FIFA 23, 24, they'll have all the MLS stadiums in, and I think that'll be for the best. So just kind of passing around here. Hopefully you don't hear the furnace going on. Long pass to Unu, who is able to handle it for just a moment, so it is intercepted. chance possibly for Sporting KC there's a long cross the box far post good clearance away but the bicycle kick by Polito right at the quarter hour mark put Sporting KC up in the friendliest derby in sports again I can elaborate on the friendliest uh yeah MLS just wants to make this a rivalry because Minnesota doesn't really have a rival in MLS like, I would say maybe Colorado there's some good games between those two, but like there really isn't one close in terms of geographical rivals. Like the closest one would be Chicago, but they're in the Eastern Conference. So they've just put us with Sporting KC, and once St. Louis comes around, it's going to be meaningless and we just won't have rivals, which is really annoying. Like just put us in a division with Chicago. Like I know they're big rivals with Columbus. But come on. Oh, an interesting through ball here. Finlay is through. Takes a touch. Takes a shot and scores straight away. What an equalizer by Finlay. A great run off of the defender. Great pass from Trap. Able to find him. And just five minutes later, we've equalized. Trap. Oh, maybe a chance here. Dotson puts it on his right. But it will be caught by Melia. Amelia will hold it, and that will do it for the opening half. A thrilling one so far. A goal for each team. A thrilling bicycle kick by Alan Polito. But then the equalizer by that man, Ethan Finley, has it tied at one. Good flip through. Even wider out to Finlay. Finlay flips a pass through that is way too far for Trap. Easily caught by Malia. Had her one by Debassi. Interesting pass that it will go through to Finlay. Finlay 
Holding the zone here in the box. Flips that through. Oh, good pass here. Reynoso shoots and scores. What an angle from the Argentine. It's a great pass from Unu, able to find the other designated player. Saloons will take the lead late at Allianz Field with just a couple minutes to go. Holy crap, almost the 90th minute. So now the defense just has to play shut down here as Martins just stampeding towards that corner, looking for a miracle cross as he does have Polito running. That was just going to find the feet of Brent Coleman, the Woodbury native. We'll find options here as Alonzo getting hassled. Perhaps a through ball. We'll find Finlay. Finlay just the last chance of the game. Throwing a ball in the box to Uno, and that will be the third goal, and that will be the convincing one as the Loons do come from behind and defeat Sporting KC by a score of 3-1. to one. Great perseverance by the squad, giving up that beautiful bicycle kick in the first 15 minutes. But then just five minutes later, Finlay answers, and the Loons just continue to put on the pressure. So they get two more goals, and they get another three points. While we will be only playing one game, and that was the Sporting KC game, we will simulate with a full squad the game against Real Salt Lake at Rio Tinto. And after 90 minutes, the Loons do prevail 3-1. to one. I believe that is two goals by Unu and an early one by Lud. 25 games into the season, the Loons sit comfortably in second place, but it'll probably be in third as they have a comfortable lead over LAFC, who, despite having three games in hand, won't get close to the total the Loons have. So it's right now... Minnesota United is the meat in the Cascadia sandwich. To finish off the episode, as always, I will give my prediction to the upcoming game, which is against Sporting KC. And this is a tough one. There are a lot of factors going into this game. And one of them is the game before. Because the Loons just played their game on a Tuesday and they'll play Saturday. But Sporting KC plays Wednesday. So possibly that one less day of rest could hurt them going into the game but Sporting KC is at full strength for the most part they do have Polito playing so that's where it kind of is a little iffy and then also just the performance last night which again I am recording this on a Wednesday I am a little shaky to give the Loons a confident score so I think I think the Loons are going to lose the top team in the West. I'm going to go 2-1. to one. It's going to be one where they are down by two. They will get one in like the 75th minute, and then they'll be just pushing for that equalizer, but they just won't get it. I know it's not the greatest way to end the episode, but uh, ah, there's worse ways. So, yes, this will be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as you did playing it. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. This has been Bear Hams, and as always, toodaloo.